Hi everyone, I'm Cody Ruth, this is the Church of Logic, and we're just going to jump right back in with my conversation with Phil Zucker about interactive theorem provers. Okay, um, I guess, so like the toy example that I like is like, you say like the commutivity of addition, for example, of natural numbers, but like for my background, that is a notion so basic that it's like, I can't even talk about that. Like that is an unspeakable notion almost <laughs> that like, that that is something to be proven is very confusing, very, very confusing. I think from an engineering or physicist perspective that like you need to prove A plus B equals B plus A. Cause like what, facts are you taking as more primitive than that like what are you talking about what am i allowed to assume and not allowed to assume and that is also the nice thing about interactive theorem provers is that this is really all pinned down and computer like refereed about like what are you allowed to use right now and what are you not um and i think that's all that in math courses i also don't have a good sense of yes. like what they're allowing me to use and not allowed to use it's very implicit from like you learn math you were taught courses and then you just have a, a sense you build a sense of what you're currently allowed to be using to solve this particular problem you're like is it a very advanced problem all right then i'm allowed to talk about crazy yeah, yeah, concepts. yeah that's kind of true let's see I, I i do have this distinct memory in math courses that there there are a few basic things about arithmetic that i wanted to know how to prove and that my math teachers didn't even yeah didn't even really understand the concept of having to prove these things but mm -hmm. as soon as we started hitting abstract algebra, again, now there were still assumptions and I was still a little bit disturbed by the fact that there was axioms and things that allowed you to manipulate quantifiers and things like that. Those were still taken for granted. However, the actual facts, the actual axioms, those were always written out because in advanced mathematics, in advanced algebra, in advanced you know, topology, you you've you've built up a, a next layer of abstraction where you say okay now we're going to consider an abstract ring these are the mm -hmm. axioms for rings mm -hmm. i'm going to consider an abstract topology this is what a topology is and you better know what a set is and what an intersection is sure those are like all left unspoken and you have to sort of use your intuition but the structure itself, now we're gonna write the axioms and you can always refer to those those are the bedrock and so everything you prove you know, about rings, about rings, you know, commutative rings with, you know, <laughs> no potent ideal, uh, all those, the, somebody's written down the axioms for you, right? So, so as soon as I started hitting more advanced undergraduate algebra, uh, I was much happier because, yeah, mm -hmm. you're working in a ring. And of course, they didn't say we're working in the logic that assumes these axioms. They're saying, Suppose you are given a structure which happens to be a ring, but but you know at some point I figured out those two things were the same. Yeah, I I completely agree. Once you get out of like the total mud, once you're up at least a lo a little bit of a layer, it makes sense. And people are used to the idea of like this is a non obvious fact because I'm working in this abstraction, and like it's obvious there should be a couple steps of calculation to like prove this fact. Then, then people are totally on board. If you wanted to prove something about the curl or the div or, you know, some trigonometric identity, we're all on board for like, uh, I'm okay, saying okay, all. But can, but like, can we just, <laughs> can, can we just separate the logic yeah. crimes that mathematicians are committing and the math crimes that physicists are committing, right? The, these are not the same crimes. <laughs> I mean, math, mathematicians don't even deserve math. They're using it all wrong. They care about all the wrong stuff. <laughs> So, so um, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, right, yeah. Now you're using an interactive improver. It is, you know, the ultimate cop, right? It does not allow you to commit any crimes. Right. Um, but Except that you are allowed to just bolt stuff in. Uh, and also sort of getting back to what this thing even is, at its core, there's, there's a crime at the very start, always. Like your pile of axioms are a crime at the start. And uh, it's about how big a pile of crimes you want versus yeah, how yeah, small yeah. a pile. And, and, it, and it's very deliberate, right? The, the, yeah. the people who build these systems, they're logicians, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they know, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're certified for these things, right? They, they have their, uh, yeah, they have their like license to declare axioms. Yeah, I mean, 
I think this is a good point to go on because there's a distinction I want to get to, get to, which is discussing the distinction between an interactive theorem prover, an automated theorem prover, and a computer algebra system, which are, there's, there's a mixture. There is definitely like a middle ground of that Venn diagram. Uh, and they, you know, the systems sort of, sort of push towards each other, but the size of the pile of crimes kind of is the thing that <laughs> sort of differentiates All them. Right. Can, can um, we just for like, okay. So, something I've noticed is I'm always happy when people are actually defining these things. They're always talking about things. Yeah, of course, you know, you know what a computer algebra system is. No, right. Let's, let's, let's do this. We, we've talked about interactive theorem provers extensively. What's an automated theorem prover? And what's a computer algebra system? Well, like all many words, the cop out is it's what a pile of things that I can would call these sorts of things, the style that do things. What's a chemist? What's a physicist? What's a mathematician? Right, so, there like, are gun to your head. lines in between. <laughs> gun to my head. But anyway, point is things like SymPy or Mathematica are computer algebra systems. And there's distinctions you could make inside of that category of there's things that are doing more rigorous stuff with polynomials and things you might also call computer algebra systems. But then so trying to solve equations, trying to solve an equations using, yeah. you know, a huge mess of algorithms yep. completely, you know, only verified on paper, if at all. Yep. And, you know, maybe they if something's useful, maybe they will fudge it a little bit of just like letting something fire, even if it shouldn't fire in every possible mathematical situation. You know, they're just they allow a lot more crimes because they just want to give you sort of. The answer is you kind of want uh, there. You, you have a question and they give you back an answer also is sort of how they're built. Now, okay. and what's an automated theorem prover? An automated theorem prover is basically you have a mathematical, a mathematical statement, a logical statement. Um, and usually it is more logical flavored than like, um, you know, the yeah, computer yeah. system is solving differential equations and stuff. And a automated theorem prover is going to be like, I have a Boolean formula or I have uh, you know, a bunch of predicate logic statements. And does this statement follow from all those other statements? And you just want it one button press to sort of say yes or no. Maybe it give you a counterexample. And uh, you know, it's you fire yeah. off maybe a single process and it just does it. Right. Um, and, and so okay, Z3. So what, what crimes um, does it need to commit? Uh, I think because this is push button, because you just want to say, I'm going to ask you a question and you take the time you need and you try to give me the answer. No interaction. Um, I think you're sort of forced to try and do a lot more. And so you have to add more axioms and more tricks. Yep. And you have to be very performant. I mean, you have to be perform. You want to be performant in all of these, but there's a strong pressure to be performant and automated theorem proving. Cause that's almost all that matters. Right. Uh, uh, correctness matters, but uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, performance matter is very paramount because people are using these things. They're dumping piles and piles of machine generated questions into them mm -hmm. um, for the purposes of software verification. So they just need to be fast. And so you need to have a huge pile of C++ and yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just, um, you know, it, there are bugs. That, I mean, there's bugs in all of these. No, yeah, make no but, mistake, but there's but more bugs. In, interactive in, in theorem prover theorem. tend to be crafted. Yeah, they they much have much bigger pressure to be correct. They have yes, they have. So it's it's also a tier of correctness. Like computer algebra system, of course, there's pressure to be correct on all of them, but there's the least pressure in a computer algebra system, uh, in a purely like logically formal correctness way for that to be correct. Then the automated theorem prover. Then there's the most pressure in an interactive theorem prover, and. Um, uh, there's also, yeah, and then also kind of the thing that's the most flexible or maybe the most useful to engineering mathematics is a computer algebra system, probably, then an automated theorem prover, then an interactive theorem prover. People are trying to flip these priority, or not the priorities, yes. but yeah, okay. the use cases. So we're kind of reaching the end, uh, but this ties in pretty well to what I wanted to ask, which is what what's your dream for like what you want to see out of these that, that doesn't necessarily currently exist. And it doesn't I mean, happen to be a serious dream, but like what 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 would be fun for you? What's what's like something you want? I mean, I want, I guess I want to stay in touch with my roots and like I spent a long time in love with physics and uh mathematics of that they use, uh that I use, I guess. Um 
And I want these systems to be accessible to those people, interactive theorem provers and automated theorem provers. And I want them to be able to apply them easily to those problems in ways that make sense to me. Um, as you know, earlier you were saying, your thing you like to go to is um, the natural number example is just like a simple example of what's hard but should be easy. My example of what is hard, not it's not impossible, of course, but hard but should be easy is like talking about a cosine. Like it, it, it's just kind of, it, there's a lot to do there if you want to start from the ground and like it shouldn't be that hard or one feels it shouldn't be that hard at least. Uh, but maybe it is, maybe it is. Uh, so I just, I want, I'm very interested in the mixing ground, I guess, of interactive theorem provers, computer algebra systems, and and automated theorem provers, pushing them all towards each other, taking inspiration from one, throwing it into each other. And there's piles of people doing these sorts of things, this work. Um, but that's something that I find particularly interesting. I'm a very automated theorem prover kind of guy, so. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's maybe call it there. <laughs> We're already pushing uh <laughs> pushing the envelope. I, I feel like this there's gonna be creep in this podcast where you know it's gonna be 15 minutes, <laughs> I'm, 20 minutes, I'm the creep it's gonna be like in this two, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be two hour episodes. Yeah, all right. I right. poor choice words. Um all right. Well, delightful to have you on. Let's do this more. Um yep. Yeah. And uh, take care of all you all there.